Well, happy Wednesday, Coming Community Church. Pastor Thomas here. Hope that you're having a great week. Don't forget, today at 2 o'clock, we will have our prayer meeting, weekly prayer meeting. You should be getting an email with all the information uh, that's contained in there, so look for that. Uh, should be. It's always a great time to gather together. We, we read a little bit of scripture, and then we pray. And for me, it's just a highlight of my week. I enjoy getting together with folks. Um, I'm going to find a way to continue this, even once uh, things start to resume normal, whatever the new normal might look like down the road. Well, we're going to continue our look at the book of James today. Uh, we're slowly walking our way through. We're into chapter four, which means we got two chapters left. I've kind of mapped it out. Looks like a couple weeks from now we'll be done at the rate we're going, and then we'll uh, move on to another topic uh, from there. So uh, today we're in chapter four. So if you have your Bibles handy, go ahead and grab them and open them up. But chapter four, starting in verse one, we're going to read through verse 6, and we'll see what this passage can teach us about dealing with strife and conflict in our lives. Let me pray for us, and then I'll read the text and we'll talk about it. Gracious God, open our eyes and our hearts today that we might hear from you because we long to be close to you. Help us to know and to trust you for your glory. Amen. James chapter 4, starting in verse 1. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is of no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You know, last time we talked about wisdom from above. On Monday, we talked about how there's a godly wisdom and there's a worldly wisdom. And what James is going even deeper in is this. The reason you have conflict in your life is because you are pursuing all the wrong things. You are pursuing worldliness. That's why he says you have a conflict in your life. Now, I want to be careful on this is that it's not always the case. There is a place where you could pursue Christ and that can lead to conflict in your relationships. I think he's specifically talking to church members with each other in this context. Um, again, we know that he is writing to the 12 tribes in the dispersion from back in chapter one. So I think he's writing to Christians and it's conflict within the church that he's dealing with. But the reason that so often there's quarrels and division within the church is that the people in the church want to pursue their own agenda. They want their way and not God's way. You know, I was part of a church once that had a pretty big division and schism within it. And uh, it was not fun. It was not pleasant at all. And at the end of the day, it was someone uh, that was stirring up trouble and being divisive uh, that was at the root of it. Um, and he was living a, uh, an agenda in a worldly lifestyle. Not wrong by the world standard. He wasn't, you know, cheating and such like that. But his priorities were not of the church. His priorities were of the world. So here's my challenge for us as we read this text. We understand that God is jealous for us. He longs for us to walk closely with him. So may we not be proud in seeking our own path and our own way, but instead may we be humble and seek God's way and listen to him. And in doing so, bring unity to the church and end strife in our own life. That's my prayer for us today. Uh, as we go forward, uh, pray that you have a great Wednesday and that uh, you'll be able to join us for our prayer meeting this afternoon. And I pray you'll have a remainder, great remainder of the week. 
We'll see you again on Friday and get ready for the weekend. Have a great day. God bless.